Okay, so today's video is going to eventually look at protein synthesis, but before we get to protein synthesis, there's a few things that we need to understand based on what we've talked about, about DNA, and then this new molecule over on this side of our table called RNA. So we remember that DNA is called deoxyribonucleic acid. Now, RNA is just ribonucleic acid. And the reason why is it's a different sugar. So the sugar in DNA has this deoxy part, whereas the, the sugar in the RNA doesn't have that deoxyribo part, okay? So the big difference, again, between the two different molecules is as we've looked at already, DNA is double-stranded, whereas RNA is only single-stranded. We also know that DNA is made up of four different bases, and so is RNA, but the big difference is DNA is made up of A, T, C, and G, whereas RNA is made up of A, G, C, and a new base called uracil. Okay, so we have a U now, and we don't have our T. So when we're creating our RNA molecule, we anytime there's an A, we pair it up with a U rather than a T. So just to put that uh, diagrammatically again, we've got our A's and our T's, our G's with our C's. Sorry, I'm just pushing Yeah, okay. So um, double-stranded molecule with our A's and T's and our G's and our C's, whereas RNA is a single-stranded molecule where our T is replaced with our U. The other big difference is as well, we have three different types of RNA. We have our mRNA, which is messenger RNA. We have tRNA, which is transfer RNA. And we have rRNA, which is whoop, ribosomal RNA. And in a minute, we'll go through what each of these three things do. The two that we need to focus on the most, our messenger RNA and transfer RNA, is they will help us create our proteins. So now we've talked about the three different types of mRNA, or the three different types of RNA, sorry, and how they're slightly different to DNA. We're now going to look at how each of those different types of RNA is used in protein synthesis. So we know that this word synthesis here means to make. So what we're going to be doing is making proteins from our double strand of DNA. So if we start with our double strand of DNA and add some bases, so A and T, G with C, Ooh, C with G, T with A, A with T, and G with C. So we start off with our double strand of DNA and we remember that DNA is broken down into genes and those genes code for our proteins. So we only need a small part of the DNA molecule. We don't need all of it to create a protein. So one particular strand of DNA can code for many different proteins. And those proteins then obviously make up the different organism that it's um, creating. So the first thing we need to do is have our DNA unwind, just like in DNA replication. So again, we uh, put our base pairs but this time we only want to use one strand as a template for our for our um sorry our protein synthesis so the first thing we need to do is create mRNA so just like we had in DNA replication we have a protein this time called RNA polymerase, which acts as the scissors that breaks the bonds between the bases. So what we then have is our template for our mRNA. Okay, so this process here is called transcription because we're transcribing DNA 
into mRNA. So what we need to have happen now is for those free RNA bases to come in and to create a new strand of mRNA. So if we create the backbone here, remember, instead of having T, this time we have U. We have our C, we have our G, we have an A. Again, we have an A here, so we need to have a U on our mRNA strand, and we have a C. So what we've created now is a single strand of mRNA, and that's going to leave the nucleus and move to what we call ribosomes, which we know are organelles in the cytoplasm where protein synthesis takes place. And then we'll have the next step, which is translation. Okay, so now we've got our mRNA strand created, which was the process of transcription. Now we have the second process, which is called translation. So our mRNA strand, I'm going to draw it this way now, just to... Um, make it a little bit easier to see how it all fits together. So we had U, C, G, A, U, C. So that was our mRNA strain that we had over here. It's now laying flat, just so we can see it a little bit better. So this is our mRNA, and it attaches to a ribosome, as I said, is the organelle in the cytoplasm where protein synthesis takes place. Now we mentioned another type of RNA, tRNA. So tRNA is transfer RNA, and its job is to bring the amino acids in and line them up with the mRNA in order to create our protein. So if we draw an amino acid up here, it will have three bases attached to it, okay? And we have different amino acids that have different combinations of uh, bases attached to them as well. So I just need to make sure that. So these were created also very similar to the way that the mRNA was created in the nucleus. Okay. And then these just hang out near the ribosomes in order to be used when protein synthesis takes place. So what happens here is the mRNA gets broken up into sections of three bases. So we have one section here, and these are called codons. So this will be one codon, and this will be a second codon. And this acts as the template that matches with our tRNA. So all these up here are tRNA floating around with the amino acid attached, and the we call these the anticodon, because they are the opposite to the codons on the mRNA strand, okay? So as we can see, we've got U, C, G here. So U we know matches with A, C matches with G, and G matches with C. So what would actually happen is this transfer RNA would come all the way over here, would match up A, G, C, and we would have this amino acid being brought in. Then we have AUC in our second codon, which we know A matches with U, U matches with A, G matches with C. So we would have U, A, G, and we would have this square amino acid. And what happens then is these amino acids then bond to each other. The codons go off to match up with more tRNA to be used later. And in the end, we have a sequence of amino acids, which we know is a polypeptide or a protein. And what we've just done is gone from our double strand of DNA, we've transcribed it into our single strand of mRNA, and now we've translated that from a single strand of mRNA into a polypeptide chain, which is our protein. And we're done.